see. Before we get started, I just wanted to welcome, we have a, a few uh, guest appearances tonight. Um, big thank you to Dr. Cole, um, who's joining us from Twin Cities Orthopedics. Uh, he has been our sounding board um, through this whole situation with COVID. Um, and he's been, him and um, our trainer, Michael and Sheen, has been working closely with uh, the USOPC on, on helping with our planning purposes. And we also have Carly Anderson on the phone with us, who's our sports psych. Um, so thanks for joining us tonight. Um, in addition, as you guys can see, we have um, our CEO, Jeff Plush, on the phone that will be kind of taking over from here. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah, thanks, Jess, and, and thanks to everyone for making time on a Monday night. Hope everyone had a relatively nice and safe, um, probably quiet Thanksgiving. Um, as everyone knows who's on the call, we, we're having certainly unprecedented times in in our country, in our um, in the sporting world. Um, it certainly affects curling as much as anyone else. And as I'm sure has been the topic of conversation in the, in the last couple of town halls you've had, um, we continue to, to look for ways to conduct events, um, prioritizing health and safety. And that's in, in part why you'll hear from Dr. Cole later as well. I do wanna take this opportunity to, to thank those of you on the call, thank um, our sport performance staff for all of their hard work and being laser focused on, on making health and safety the priority. Thanks to the Athlete Advisory Council for, for doing the same and obviously helping to really just create this platform where we could talk to everyone in, in uh, one fell swoop. Um, it, it goes without saying that as we sit here today, um, almost on December 1, um, curling in, in our country and certainly in the upper Midwest is particularly challenged. And whether it's um, locations that are simply on lockdown or certainly mandates against certain sizes, our ability to have events as we look at the turn of the calendar is, is very, very challenging to say the least. Um, and as, as I'm sure Dr. Cole will allude to, but you've, you've heard this before, but I'll reiterate, you know, everything that we're seeing uh, from the medical side of things uh, lends it to believe that it's going to get worse, not better, um, certainly through the holiday period and the cold weather period. And so as we look at January, February, it's a real challenge. So, so we are looking at other alternatives, certainly. Um, I think I speak for everyone, but certainly the, the office staff, but certainly all athletes who, who want to compete on the ice for championships. And so we also want to have that happen. Um, knowing that at this point it's looking incredibly challenging to have those events happen in the normal, in the normal curling window. And so um, we continue to have deep dialogue with all of our, our club partners who are looking to host events or our region partners, as well as the WCF. And I'm still awaiting a, um, an update from the WCF board meeting that took place relative to their world championships and how it might affect our calendar. Um, Say that the things in January, February are are certainly at risk, um, and we're working basically all day, every day, trying to find the best place for those in the calendar so we can conduct safe championships. At the end of the day, that's all that is top of mind for us. Um, I believe it'd be top of mind for you as well. So hopefully, we're we're working from a point of view that you guys support, um, and knowing that that's our our priority number one. So. Um, with that, you know, Jess, I'll kick it back to you, but certainly I can either take questions or comments now or certainly stay on the, stay on the Zoom and, and take them at the end, whatever is your preference. I think uh, we, we can take uh, questions now if, you, if you're open for it. Sure. Does anybody have any questions for Jeff at this time? Just leave it. You can you can always ask Jessica later if that's the case. This will be a great opportunity for anyone that that does have any to to ask uh, you know any of us any questions or you know Dr. Cole's on as well, so um, to ask him any questions uh, or he may have um, be able to guide us in in a certain way. But um, yeah, anything that anyone has. As we've always said, safety is our number one priority. So. Um, that's the, that drives every decision that we make. I guess I have, I have one question in regards to when 
when the discussion was happening about um, rooming uh, people, uh, teams for, for um, and I'm talking specifically about the, the junior world qualifier that the discussion was that one. Um, the, the comment was made about teams having just two players in a room um, versus the question being, could you have all four players since all four players are going to be together anyway? Um, from a cost standpoint of, of having people um, in a room for five days prior to the event plus the event um, and stuff like that, uh, what would be the difference of two people versus the four people that are that are going to be exposing themselves to each other anyway? I may default to Dr. Cole on that um, quite that question specifically, um, but I believe it's to decrease the risk of the infection or from the virus getting to the other players. So if one person has it and could be carrying it, then at least it's limiting the amount of exposure to everybody else. But Dr. Cole, you could probably do a better job of answering that question. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, um, it is just all about reducing exposure. You know, I, I completely understand where you're coming from in terms of if you got a team of four um, throughout the competition, they're probably going to be having some level of exposure to each other, um, you know, throughout that competition. But, you know, when you're talking about four people in a room um, in extremely close contact, um, really there's no way to, to – you know, distance yourself, even when you try to, at least when you're on the ice and doing other things, like when, when there's time, you have a, a way of distancing yourself. But when you have four people in a room, all it takes is one person to get it. Um, there's no, you know, most people probably aren't going to wear their masks throughout the entire time they're in a room. Um, so it's just, you know, it just helps limit the exposure. And I think that's, you know, I think there's certain, just like with any sport, um, you're going to have to work within the confines of that sport in terms of what's safe and what's reasonable. Um, and so there's certain aspects of the sport that are going to bring people within close contact. But when you are able to separate people and keep distance, that's what we're trying to do there. Thanks, Dr. Cole. Any other questions at this point? Yeah, this is Sandra. So you're looking to possibly move it out of the January, February window, right? Is that what you're thinking of right now? Yeah, look, I'm thanks talking, Sandra. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm talking mostly about men's and women's national championships because uh, juniors is already further in the, in the calendar, further down the calendar. <clears throat> So. Yeah, look, I, I think what we're looking to do is figure out the safest place to find a part of the calendar that can happen. I, I think, um, and look, we're talking to all of our constituent partners to try and find the best place where to land. And so we don't have anything definitive yet, but we're, we're certainly looking for, frankly, probably outside of January and February for that matter. I think if we're honest, it's um, and look, I'll defer to Dr. Cole on some of this, but everything we're hearing and, and he has shared with us, you know, it's, it's going to take getting out of um, people being back indoors too. So it's really, we're not going to see real relief until we get out of the winter months, I believe. And so trying to find potential places in the calendar, find potential venue partners, um, and, and to kind of um, a little bit piggyback on the earlier question, certainly looking for ways to mitigate that cost. We, we are, are well aware of the burden that that could create for people. And so if there's a pathway to getting to a part of the calendar that maybe we don't need to be as, um, as much of a bubble or as much of a quarantine, um, those are all things we want to try to explore to try and to create an opportunity to have these events in the safest way possible, cost efficient as possible where we can be. Um, and still have a great quality competition where, where we can crown a champion. So those are all the, the factors we're working diligently on. And look, we, we know that we'll have to make final decisions in the very, very near term here. So that's, we're working full time on, on finding a, a home for these. So it, sorry, so it, 
hinges somewhat, like you said, on what happens with the world championships and where they land, but not necessarily because what we do might not line up with them at all. Yeah, look, I think it probably, fair point, I probably wouldn't say hinge. I just, I'd like to know, I guess it just gives more clarity to how we think about the calendar. But, but we're going to make the decisions that prioritizes our athletes' health and safety first and foremost. I think we've seen that the, the WCF has been a little slower in some of their decision making. Um, and that's fine, actually, because they have a, they have a different um, analysis they have to go through. But we're, we're going to have to move forward and, and make the decisions that is best for us. Other questions? Well, Jeff, can you hear me? This is yeah, Steph. I can. Yes, Steph. Do we know when we're likely to get a, uh, I guess, a result or, or some information back from that WCF board meeting? I, I, yeah, thanks, Steph. I, I would anticipate tomorrow. I sent, uh, they happened on Friday. Um, I sent a note in this morning. So, um, or this afternoon, their time. So hopefully by tomorrow morning, I'll have feedback from them. Um, and and I'm hoping they, <laughs> I guess I'm hoping that they made decisions as opposed to kicking the can down the road. But but they understand and they understand our point of view. We, we would love for them to make decisions that they could help Im impact our thinking. Um, so we'll see, but, but hopefully tomorrow. Okay. In the event that they do end up kicking the can down the road again, um, do we know what our timeline would be for just going ahead and, and making a decision regardless of, of where they wind up in the future? Are we talking a week, two weeks? What are you thinking? Yeah, less than, I think a week. I think, you know, I think even by end of this week, I think we know that we need to move forward. And, and obviously, as you know, we've had great dialogue with the AAC. I think there's, I think we're all, want the same things or on the same page. It's really just understanding the total, um, trying to get as much clarity on the total situation as we can before we pull the trigger. But, but I think by end of the week, we'll have absolute clarity on what we want to do. Excellent. Sounds good. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Steph. Hey, and this is Mike Graves. Uh, quick question, is U18 uh, included in that um, package of decisions that you're trying to make? Um, you know, it doesn't lead to a world event, but uh, I was just wondering if that's included in uh, everything that's going on. Yeah, look, I'll comment real quick on that, and then, um, and then maybe Jess, you can you can follow up. But but the answer, Mike, is is certainly yes. Everything is is included in that as we think about, you know, how we could possibly do events um, safely, and 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 I might as well throw out there now seniors as well, right? So anything that we had in that window has to be um, reevaluated, looked for a different and better home for it to take place. Um, and and knowing that look there's there's um impacts on people's schedules and their and their um training process and mentality around things as so we want to be as respectful of that as possible just knowing that we're not getting we're not getting a lot of breaks as i think we all can agree it's just it's just not um it's not going the right direction for us especially in the parts of the country where we have some of these events planned so um i don't know jess if there's further comment you want to make to junior specifically uh, I think you pretty much covered it, right? So we're exploring all options and um, we are keeping the athlete safety at our highest priority. So hosting an event in January and February, like you said, um, it, it is, the numbers aren't going in our favor. So we're just evaluating every aspect, every line that we can. We, we definitely hope to have events. We don't want to cancel events. Um, so we'll, we'll hopefully have some more solid answers here in the next week or so, but um, yeah, U18 is included in that. And so is the U21s and the um, qualifiers for U21s. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Does anybody have other questions for Dr. Cole or Jeff here?
Okay. Well, as always, you guys, if you do have questions, feel free to email uh, Phil or myself and we'd be happy to help you along those lines. Um, otherwise, we will be hopefully getting some information here in the next couple of weeks and um, hope you have a safe, safe uh, next month here. Yeah, thanks to everyone for joining and thanks especially to Dr. Cole and Dr. Anderson. Um, and and mike and jeff for jumping on uh we've got a great team that we're working with and uh um uh, and just trying to make those challenging decisions and and keep everybody's safety in in mind so um yeah, continue to plug away and we'll keep everybody posted and uh stay tuned to social media and the website uh as to our next uh, town hall meeting thanks everyone have a good night thanks everyone guys thanks